The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 22nd, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, really 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Go ahead and send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question like uh, David H. just did here, that's a wonderful thing. Of course, if you're in our Tiger's Den, well, we'll take any ping. But I do prefer those private pings. just easier for me to uh, keep track of uh, your request out there. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a bit of a mixed bag out here. You've got the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ slightly higher, 12 points, 9 points, and 56, about a half a percent for the NASDAQ 100. Russell is uh, at the flat line. Semis are off 21 points, or 8 tenths of a percent. Trend is down 7 tenths, or 91 points. You've got gold trading out at 1838.80. That's totally flat. Silver's off 34 cents. Lights we crew back 376, 105.77 is the print there. Natural gas up 6 pennies and a 30-year treasury. Big move. Uh, two, uh, two points and 20. 20, 30 seconds out there. Trading out at 136, even Stephen. So where do we want to begin? I think we go begin with yesterday's signals out here. If we take a look at the primary indices out here, they all completed, well, not all. Um, well, actually, they did. We take a look at the cash indices. You've got completed by the D point patterns. The only exception here is going to be the Russell 2000 that actually confirmed a Rhodesman indicator bottom. So you got bullish reversal candles. You can see the Dow was a 1 to 1.272, A to B equals CD. The same for the S&P 500, just a 1 to 1 inside the NDX 100. Russell hasn't completed it. It doesn't need to. It's got that Rhodesman indicator bottom pattern that's already in place. The semis confirmed a uh, by the D point pattern as to the New York Stock Exchange. So you got all those core indices with those famous by the D point patterns. If we go switch over, take a look at the equity future contracts out here, what we will see momentarily is you'll see the same kind of pattern for the ES Mini. Yesterday confirmed that Three River Morning Star. I don't show the A to B equals CD pattern here, but uh, trust me, it is there. The NQ does not have a confirmed daily bottom signal. And all it needs is a bullish reversal candle to, to do that. Maybe the markets don't really take off to the upside until we get that final confirmation on a daily base from the NQ. But the weekly already has a TD9 count bottom. So it doesn't necessarily have to do that. But the NQ daily time frame, one of the few charts without a actual bottom signal, the type of patterns it is that I take a look at. The Dow confirmed to buy the D point. You had that nice three river morning star pattern. Now, in the case of the Dow, the case of the ES mini, both those are dealing with the resistance levels of their red oscillator and change lines. If we see closes above that, that's going to signal higher price. Now, in the case of the ES mini, that's 3841. In the case of the Dow, equity future contract, that's 31354. As you look at the Russell 2000 on the right hand side, yesterday was a confirmed three river morning star pattern as well. That confirmed that Rhodes momentum indicator signal. 
signal. No, it's level of resistance. It's first level of resistance, about 1720. And if price can clear that, then you're off to 1773 out there. Each of these, if they can clear the top of their profiles, they are set up to make a run all the way back to the highs of March, uh, the end of March out there. And inside the ES Mini, that's at 46.17. Inside the NQ, that's 15.228. Inside the Dow, that's 35.177. Inside the Russell, uh, that would be the 1919 level. Are you asking me if that's a real possibility? I will tell you, absolutely, it is a real possibility out there. So that's what's going on on the daily time frames out there here. I'll show you the uh, weekly chart uh, for the NQ. Just to finish up that uh, business, we'll switch back over to a different screen here. And on, so it should be this screen right here. Let's see, did that? Yeah, so we got. If you take a look at the NQ, you'll see that last week was actually two bottom signals. Uh, was the TD9 count pattern? It was the bar following bar number nine. It was a seventh wave move. That's the letter G. Now this week, if we get a bullish reversal candle. Uh, in any of these, the NQ, the ES, the uh, Dow, or the Russell 2000, they will confirm roads, momentum indicator, bottom patterns out there. So the signal is there. We just need to see a weekly close with some type of bullish reversal candle, and then you'd have, uh, then you'd really have confirmation of a uh, move of a bottom, a significant bottom inside of the uh, market. So the uh, let's do this here. The real key. So now I expect. Uh, that this is not going to be a simple, easy move to the upside. It's going to be a bit choppy. And the reason it's going to be a bit choppy, let's do this here. Let me just switch screen or let me come back over to this screen. You know, blank. Yeah, okay. So here are our TAS market profile, market breadth calculations. And in the upper right-hand corner, that's really what I want you to take a look at. And that's the uh, 60, the 240, the daily, and the weekly time frames out here. And so on the 60 minute, you have a bullish crossover, these speed dials. If you're in red, if you're in the red zone, it's not the kind of, you know, you got the NFL package or something along those lines. It's, it's a bearish crossover. But if you're going to start seeing a bottom, you're going to start seeing these shorter term time frames, 60 to 40. I could put the 30 minute over here, but I'm not going to at the moment. So if we take a look at the 60, it's really the 240 that's really bullish out here. But here's a 60 minute time frame. And on a 60 minute time frame, we had a nice, let me get rid of the uh, center line out here. Yeah, that nice bullish crossover. What that means is we now have on a 60-minute basis for the NDX 100, you have 51 instruments trading above the top of their profile, 21 below the bottom. That's what gives it that bullish crossover. That was the one hour. Here, if you take a look at the four-hour time frame, you're talking about being uber bullish here. You have 72 above the top, 10 below the bottom. Now, the weekly or the daily, I should say, has some work cut out for it. But you are getting the signal that you want to see that kind of confirms, not kind of, it's confirming what we saw yesterday in the markets. All those confirmed by the D-point patterns, a couple of roads momentum indicator signals as well. And now we've got an improvement inside the daily time frame for the NDX 100. 14 are trading above the top, whereas there's 33 below. So that's what's going to give us this choppy market out here. But you've got all the bottom signals that you need. You now have the uh, the interday charts here that are showing us a, a potential for a change in trend. If we switch this over and take a look at the S&P 500 before we go to break, you'll see a similar type of scenario. 60 minute in the bullish zone, uh, 240 in the bullish zone as well. If we take a look at the 240 minute chart out here, what we'll see for the S&P 500 is we now have 295 instruments trading above the top of their four hour profile and 87 trading below the bottom. If you're short, be careful. If you're expecting to move lower, be careful. Why? Because at 1.14 in the afternoon, the markets are behaving the way they should, which is bouncing back and forth, where we have the short-term time frames that have switched to a bullish market path crossover, and they're helping the daily do the same. See Roads with TFN. We'll be back in just a few. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve 
in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. This the gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, up, folks. Let's go out to Philly and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, oh, I'm very good. I, uh, I have to tell you. I found that very helpful. You run through the NASDAQ 100, S&P 500, and the number of instruments exceeding uh, short-term time frame profiles. That's very helpful to uh, Excellent. get a Excellent. sense Good. we might be yeah. dealing with here. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. Glad that that helped you out and, and everybody else as well. Uh, Steve, I know we've got a I, Go ahead. I, I, and I apologize if uh, my cell phone reception fades out on you. But with that said, Steve, I wanted to ask you about uh, bond futures. Uh, we all can see we uh, have a little ABCD pattern rallying right here. We're currently 136, even on the SEP futures. Uh, interestingly enough, the low occurred last Thursday on the 16th, and price has now bounced back up and uh, come back above the low back on May 9th. So we all can see that. Um, that's pretty clear. I wanted to ask you specifically, looking at your weekly and monthly charts, your TD9 couch, your other indicators, maybe cycle studies or seasonal studies that you've got, uh, can you uh, share with us what that info is telling you regarding how important the low uh, on uh, June 16th down at the 131 level is. Uh, you know, I'm asking myself the question, is that a very important bottom that's going to stand for a while with a good rally to come, or is it something else? So uh, if you could shed any light on that topic, I'd be much obliged. Sure, my pleasure. So we've got the 30-year uh, Treasury bond. I've got my uh, my synthetic symbol up. We've got the daily and upper left, 
John wanted to focus on the weekly. That's the upper right. And what you'll see is the A to B equals CD pattern that was completed uh, last week at that 131-ish level. The reason, folks, and John, the reason that I say it was completed is not because it got to the one-to-one -one level. It's because as price was approaching that one-to-one -one level, it formed a bullish hammer candle last week. For me, that is how A to B equals CD patterns, either to the upside or the downside. In this case here, we're talking the downside. Go ahead and confirm a bottom. Now, if we take a look at the daily time frame, although it's not shown here, you'll see it on the other charts when I pull that over. The bottom that formed on the daily time frame, as was making that low, was a Rhodes Mint Indicator bottom. That generated a little piercing candle. That was a bullish reversal candle. That's the way a Rhodes Mint Indicator signal gets, and that was on uh, June 15th. That's the way a, an RMI signal gets confirmed out there. So we got the daily confirmation. Uh, daily, by the way, price is trading above the top of its daily profile. The next resistance level on a further move higher is going to be the bottom of its weekly profile john and that's at 137 if price can close above 137 that's a signal to move to 140 and above 140 143 out there until price gets back into the weekly profile it's hard to really i would have to say until price closes above the top of the weekly profile that would then signal to me that this could be a significant bottom now it's a long way away from where we're at but on the daily time frame the weekly time frame you've got confirmed bottoms let's go john any questions about these black background charts before i move over to the the uh, white background multi time frames so far, so good, Steve. Thanks. Perfect. Okay. So let's go switch the uh, charts up here. We'll get a little bit more information. And to answer John's question specifically about the monthly time frame, we do not have a bottom signal yet. There is that A to B equals CD pattern. Just like the weekly completed one, the, uh, the monthly may have completed one. What the monthly would need to do is generate some type of bullish reversal candle. It can easily generate a hammer candle by month's end. It's only in bar number seven. Price is approaching its breakout level, 128.31. So the monthly is hard to call right now. Um, as much as you'd like me to, it's hard to call. On the weekly chart, you can see that bullish uh, uh, hammer candle out there. You can see both the A to B equals CD. That was completed the roads meant to indicator signal and the red oscillator and change line is right up at the bottom of that profile the 130 what's well, actually up the 137 and a half type area out there so that's a level that price could find resistance at the daily time frame and i've got two different sets of profiles so on the september contract using my ninja trader it says john that there's resistance in the 138 and uh, almost 139 level and about 137 out here with regard to what's going on in the short term time frame you've got a 30 minute a 60 minute and a two hour time frame chart each which got to td9 counts now the 120 minute two hour chart this next candle completes at 2 p.m assuming that it doesn't trade above the high that was bar number nine the high of the day so far in the 30 year treasury if those highs get taken out john that tells us about a strong momentum move to the upside now that doesn't have to happen this afternoon it could happen overnight could happen in the morning out there but there is uh, those short-term td9 count patterns and if those fail that's what's going to signal that the 30 year treasury should continue to move higher so in summary the monthly too early to tell but it sure does have that possibility the weekly has confirmed bottoms the daily has confirmed bottoms short-term tops have some short-term topping signals and if those get taken out the 30-year treasury should continue to move higher does that answer your questions uh-oh we may have lost john on his uh, cell phone so uh if we did um First, thanks for calling in. And uh, second, I hope that all this information helps you out. So uh, thanks for the call. That was John. We've got uh, some other requests as well. So let's go to uh, those. These are from Sat P. And Sat P wants to take a look at three different instruments. So if you give us a minute here. Oh, I see. I just need to change one thing here. Let's get to our daily, weekly, and monthly time frames. They're going to be a little bit quicker in updating the uh, charts out here. So one of the requests. And Specifically, what Sat P was looking for was trying to understand where the monthly TD9 counts were. And in the case of Roku, it formed the bar number nine last month. This is the bar following bar number nine. It's a lower low, and this month will complete the pattern. That would then suggest that we should see Roku on a monthly basis try to make its way up to the 177.56 level. If we take a look at the weekly time frame here for Roku, this has a confirmed Rosemont indicator bottom. It's really got two of them, both confirmed by hammer candles. So that is certainly telling us that it is trying to form a bottom here. It's a bullish structured profile on the weekly basis, and a close above 94.48 should take price to 126.98. 
daily time frame for Roku, roads went to indicator bottom, price to target the 99.93 to 110.56 level. The second instrument that was requested was OKTA. Uh, which I don't know what uh, what that actually is off the top of my head. It doesn't really matter because we're agnostic to what we're trading. We're just looking for the patterns. In the case of Okta, no TD9 count. You're in bar number eight, um, uh, and you haven't made, you haven't taken out last month's low. So no indication that we've got a confirmation of a TD9 count that's going to happen. You've got to take out last month's low. doesn't have to happen, by the way, in June. It could happen in uh, July or August. On a weekly basis, you do have a TD9 count bottom. And here, price just needs to overcome its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 88.99. And if price on a weekly basis can overcome that, then you should see Okta move higher. But you don't have a monthly TD9 count, which was specifically what you were asking about. The daily time frame has a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Next level resistance for it is 92.10. We get back from this uh, breakout here. We'll finish this off for Sat P, and that just has to take a look at restoration. Hardware. RH is the ticker symbol. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So you got Restoration Hardware printed out at 256.67. The monthly time frame shows that a TD9 count bottom will be confirmed uh, this month. 
and will certainly be completed by next month. Remember, it's either the low of bar 8, 9, or the bar following 9 out here. Now, most likely, uh, the uh, bottom is in on the monthly basis, the TD9 count, that is, because on a weekly basis, we have a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom. Now, price has got to clear that oscillator and change line. So the level of resistance, the first level that you're looking for price to clear is uh, 254.48. Then above that, you got 261.38. If you can do that, you should see a move up to the 324 level. So a TD9 count on, on restoration hour for the monthly, roads momentum indicator bottom on the weekly, daily also has a roads momentum indicator bottom. This should take price to 260.60. If price can clear or close above 260.60, that's going to suggest a further move higher. So SAT P, two out of the three. I've got those uh, uh, TD9 count bottoms on the monthly time frame. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in and have a, a great day. We've got a request here from David H. from Tomball, Texas. He wants to take a look at Sandbridge. Ticker symbol there is SD. So let's get that fired up. He says, can you look at Sandbridge generally? Can you give me support and resistance levels and recommended and a recommended entry point for Sandridge Energy? So on a monthly time frame out here, what do you have? You know, you've got a what appears to be a confirmed sell the D point pattern because of the bearish engulfing candle that you've got. Um, prices, so the support level on the weekly basis should be 1753. If price closed below 1753, odds favor move to 1439. The daily time frame today is going to form bar number nine of a TD nine count at its second breakout level, which is 1806. So what this is signaling to you is that Sandridge Energy should form a bottom between today and tomorrow. It could get a lower low tomorrow. Then if we get that, what we should see is price move up towards its oscillator and change line, currently printed at 2304. That's going to change as price moves out here. But with regard to Sand Ridge Energy, Sand, Sand Ridge Energy out there, Monthly, not looking so good. Weekly, uh, kind of questionable. Maybe 1753. Maybe that's what you see tomorrow that gets you to that bar following bar number nine. And that is a bullish structured profile. So 1753 should hold that support. Doesn't guarantee that it'll hold that support, but it should hold that support. And you like that combined with the uh, daily TD9 count. So I'd wait till tomorrow to get your confirmation out there, Dave, but I do hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Uh, we got a request out here from Brent in Martinez, California. And uh, Brent wants to take a look at GGB. So let's get that fired up here. And the question is, uh, the steel stocks have been under selling pressure for some time now. I don't have any position. Just watching from the sidelines. Looks like they have further to go. Could you look at GGB on a longer term time frame chart? So we got that up there. Is there anything around 350 as a potential support or any other area that we see on our chart? So with regard to GGB out here, price is basically sitting at or just underneath the bottom of its monthly profile, which is 447. We're at 440. So price is trading into a support level on the monthly time frame. On the weekly time frame, the support level would be its breakout area, and that's at 427. Of course, you're asking me, what is it that we see at 350? So at 350, nothing on the monthly, nothing on the weekly. The levels on the monthly and weekly would be 286 and 293, but price has to close below 427 on the weekly in order for that to come to fruition. The daily time frame, Brent, is going to generate a complete a TD9 count bottom today. This is the bar following bar number nine. What this and this is trading back into a prior swing point. I'm going to on my other chart. I'm not going to switch panels here, but let me get that up. I'm just curious. You've probably already done that work. So my, my question is, what's the ah, geez, what is the volume test? GGB, Steve, it's not that hard. Apparently for me, it is that hard, but for everybody else, it would not be that hard. I'm just curious. So the swing point that it's trading into has not gotten all the way down there. It's close. Is the uh, swing point from November 8th had about 12 million shares. You're already down with 13. Boy, it's pulling into that area with some volume out there. Brent, it goes like this. You've got a confirmed TD9 count. Um, and as long as this low holds whatever the low ends up being today. Currently, that low is priced at about uh, 433. Um, if that holds, you should at least see a bounce up to the 505 level out there. You're not getting the nice confirming signals on the weekly and the monthly, although the monthly is sitting back at a support level. So, and that can be a bottom signal. 
So, Brent, thanks for taking the time to write in. I hope that that helps you out and have a, a wonderful Wednesday. We've got a request from Cam to go take in the Tiger's Den to go take a look at uh, Goldilocks. And uh, basically the question, well, let me get the charts up here. Give me a moment. Make sure we're on the right screen, and we are. Cam's question reads like this. Steve, if you have time, we do. Could you give your thoughts on the August Gold contract? We've been in a channel and wondering which direction you're indicated to say it will break. Well, the channel that I've got it in on the daily basis, is that what you're referring to? Did you say a time frame? You, you, you sort of didn't, I don't think. But I'll show you the so-called, what I'll call sideways channel or consolidation channel. And that's really trading between its daily profile level. And that's at the 1879 level. And I've got two different sets of profiles. And so you can't see both those sets on your screen right now. If you give me a moment, and I do mean just a moment, the bottom of the daily profile for the August contract on my other screen, and unfortunately, Cam, sometimes we get different numbers. I use both. The bottom of that profile is 18.1380. So the consolidation or sideways range out here, and it is range bound, is 18.13 to 18.79. You're asking me, does uh, do our charts give us any kind of feel for a direction? Well, it's got a completed Gartley buy pattern. It completed an A to B equals CD to uh, to the downside out here, but that's just led to a consolidation. I don't know if it's a consolidation that's going to lead to higher price or consolidation that's going to lead to lower price. But what I can do, let's see if I can do this here relatively quickly, um, and that is go to the seasonal charts here. So let me go, and the folks over at Season X have been kind enough to uh, uh, give me a uh, subscription so I could use that during the show. And that uh, really kind of helps, uh, in this case here, with regard to Cam, was looking for some answers with regard to, hey, what's gold doing and where is it headed to? So to do that, give me a moment here, popular instruments, gold. You get that up. Where is it? Here we got gold. Okay. Let's get that over on uh, this other screen here. Uh, so this screen, let me change screens. Yep, let me change screens out here. It will be here momentarily. What you're going to see is the seasonal pattern associated with gold. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this. We're going to adjust. This is just 10 years. This will take us back 54 years out here. We'll put it exactly where we're at today. And what you can see here, so what, the, what gold is doing in that trading sideways aspect cam is very much what we see taking place on the seasonal cycle out here, the seasonal pattern, or the seasonal pattern over the last, uh, what was it, 54 years out there. So it does appear that gold has formed a bottom. Well, we saw that with the A to B equals CD. We've got the sideways uh, move that's going on, and uh, gold should continue to move higher out here. Now, we're in the month of June. The month of June has kind of been a down month for Goldilocks. Now, what we can also do out here is we can... Um, we can look at what's gold typically do during midterm election cycles. Well, in this case here, it doesn't look so good. It looks like what gold might want to do from a seasonal standpoint is move sideways to lower into about the July 4th weekend out here. July 4th, typically over the last 54 years, take a look at the seasonality of midterm cycles. That is when we see the average bottom form. But then what we can see here is it is a gigantic move to the upside. So, Kim. We do have that sideways channel, just as you pointed out, out there. And, uh, you know, it appears that gold is getting ready to move higher. It just may be a couple of weeks before that takes place up there. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks for writing in. Steve Rose with TFNN would love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648. Steve. TFNN. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the only question really that we've got right now is from Rahul, 1947 in the uh, Tiger's Den. Uh, I'm not sure if 1947 is the year of birth, birth out there, but uh, I like the uh, handle. One of my favorite songs rhymes with Rahul. It is Rasul, and that is a, a tune by uh, Spyro Gyra out there. Uh, I was at a uh, at a uh, concert many many years ago with uh, that he was at uh, Earl Clue had put it on and and they had brought in Spyro Gyra and I'm friends with Earl so afterwards I was sitting around uh, and he didn't play Rasul even though I had requested it and. Uh, Beckenstein, that is, and we were sitting there having a beer. He didn't mind me buying him beers out there, uh, and he just said it was just a, it was a difficult song for him to play and to get the band. But I think it's one of the more beautiful tunes out there. But in any event, the question that Rahul, 1947, asked, he said, "Are you guys waiting to reload on the short side?" And what does Stevie say? Now, what I say may be completely different than the other guys. Um, I don't get a chance that much to listen to the other shows out here um but i'm just sharing with you my signals what i have up on my screen right now uh, and, and you didn't catch the beginning of the show in the beginning of the show we really laid out the bullish market conditions yesterday's signals generated all kinds of buy the d points so those of you that love the a to b equals cd pattern you've got confirmations all over the board out here one of the ways that the new york stock exchange forms its bottoms is with a, a divergent pattern in the advanced decline oscillator that is the second panel that you're looking at. Now, the advanced decline oscillator is nothing more than taking a look at the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. Now, I know that's a lot to say out there and even more to chart, but that's what that is representing out here. Now, the cool thing about it and price in the case of the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator got into the extreme oversold. Oversold is minus 150. You start approaching the minus 250 and below, you're getting to the extreme oversold condition where you at least get some type of relief rally. Well, in this case here, what we got, which is what you like to see really more from a bottom standpoint, is you like to see this divergent pattern where we're making higher highs or higher lows, I should say, in the advanced client oscillator while prices making lower lows out there. The last time that we had that pattern was back at the lows that formed back in January of 2021. And obviously that took us higher. That took us back above the prior swing point out there. And the prior swing point here in the New York Stock Exchange is about 16,000. Am I saying that that's where price can head to? Absolutely, price can head there. Now, 
What needs to happen here, Rahul, and everybody else that is looking, is we need to see this advanced decline oscillator get above the zero level. It is not there yet, so it has not proven its bullishness to us. It's given us the bottom signal, but now what we're really looking for is confirmation, and that confirmation would be a close above the zero line. We really need to see two consecutive days above that level, but if we do that, then it's off to the races as far as the advanced decline oscillator divergent pattern is concerned. Whew, that was a mouthful out there. What else do we have going on? What we also have going on out here is, let's take a look at the spot volatilities. In order for the spot volatilities to confirm the bullishness that Steve sees inside of the chart patterns out here. You, you, you cannot ask me to come on each day, share with you either Rhodes momentum indicator signals, TD9 counts, or A to B equals CD patterns, and then when they form, tell you that they don't mean anything. I can't do that. Now, in the case of the spot volatility, which is falling, it's still above its 50-day exponential moving average. So, Rahul, that is a uh, that's a dangerous place to be for the spot volatility because here's the reason. Because here is typically. You guys can do this yourself. Here's the typical price moving behavior when price is above the spot, uh, the 50-day expense moving average for the spot volatility. So those would be in yellow, and uh, and when price and when the spot volatility price is below the 50-day expense moving average for the for the uh, for the spot VIX index out there. Those would be the green boxes. So that's when you're below the 50-day, it's sideways to higher. When you're above, it's sideways to lower out there. So what we need to see out here to confirm. What yesterday's signals are generating for us is for that spot politics to close below its 50-day. That's at 28.04, your 29.19. I fully expect that we're going to see that spot politics get to 28.04. Whether it takes that out or not, that I don't know. I believe that it will based upon all the other signals that we have. And then we've got the equity future charts. That's not the ones that I was searching for. Let's see if I can find the ones that I was searching for. Where was it? Uh Huh. So I don't know where I put that. But I'll just go to these here. Yeah, that's not going to be really helpful. It's just harder to see. Basically, what I say, I'll just give you the ES Mini out here. Well, that's not that helpful either. What I, uh, da, 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 da. Basically, there are, well, this might help. Let's just go to this. There are new profiles that form. And profiles really help us to understand where buyers and sellers line up with each other. So now we're taking a look at the ES Mini. This chart's a little bit cleaner to take a look at. And you've got a bullish structured profile. What a bullish structured profile means is that the center where you have both buyers and sellers and where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value in between the range. The range being the bottom where you have buyers, the top where you have sellers. Well, the top is at 38.41. The bottom's at 36.89. What did price do this morning on pullback? It got back and came pretty close to testing that 36.89 level. Price yesterday closed above the center. We're above the center right now. We're above yesterday's high. These markets are going to move higher. So no, do not short this market out here. If you want to short, and I'm not suggesting that you do that, but if you do want to short, then at least wait until you can get up or the market can get up to where the sellers are located inside the S&P 500 via the ES Mini, and that's at that price level of 38.41 out there. So uh, that's kind of the answer, not kind of, it is the answer to your question, at least with regard to what does Stevie's chart say? Now, I'm not giving you my opinion. I am giving you, I guess, the opinion of what the charts are saying and the signals that are there. But I'm not forcing anything. I'm letting you take a look at it as well. So I do hope that helps you out. Thanks for the uh, question or the request out there. Let me see if we've got anything else. I think we might have. Do we have one more? Um, the dreaded Pirate Z. This is the only indicator of its kind that measures breadth in this way, summation. Okay, so I don't think that was meant for me necessarily. Maybe it was. This is the only indicator of its kind that measures breadth in this way, summation. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. It is, yeah, it's, well, look, and he's referring to, he's referring to that advanced decline oscillator and that pattern that we had out there. And it is compelled. They, there's wonderful information that uh, we can glean uh, from these uh, charts. And that way, what we're not doing is really trading with, um, we're trading logically. We're not trading emotionally speaking, so to speak, out here. We're looking for patterns that repeat, um, you know, and, and what they uh, typically uh, do and what they mean out there. So, yeah, it's a, it's a really good indicator. Uh, Jay, look, the market breadth indicator, the TAS market breadth indicator, that is a very cool tool as well. We shared that with you earlier, um, earlier in the show. Uh, Coda writes in. He said on Ethereum with the TD buy, 
what do we watch for? So I can't get Ethereum, but I think ETH is the is the uh, ETF, right? I think it is. So let me go switch over to the daily, weekly, and monthly timeframes out here. And let's go take a look at ETH, which I believe is the ETF for Ethereum. So let's get that. Why, is it, why didn't that take? ET, why didn't that take? There we go. ETHE. So let's get that. Yes, closed end fund. Perfect. Thanks, Coda. Uh, so now as we take a look at this, so the monthly chart here is suggesting that price may pull back to its breakout level 566. No monthly bottoming signal, but pulling back to the breakout level can be a bottoming signal. On a weekly basis out here, what Ethereum did last week was it formed a TD9 count bottom. And if price closes below the low of yesterday, uh, the low of last week out there, that suggests lower prices. On a weekly basis, the next downside target for ETHE would be $4.36. The daily time frame, we'll come back to this, has a TD9 count bottom. So we'll take a look at what it needs to break to suggest that the bottom has some movement to the upside. Perfect. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
So as we look at the uh, ETF charts here for Ethereum ETH -E, on a weekly basis, you've got a TD9 count bottom. That should take price up to its oscillator and change line or towards that level. And that's at the 1283 area. And on a daily time frame, you've got a TD9 count bottom. So if you want to take a, a long trade here, makes sense. The monthly is not helping us out. But the weekly, and what you would do is you would close out that trade if there's a close below last week's low on a weekly time frame. Uh, price is inside a daily profile, so your resistance level is at 879. Your price can clear 879, and you should see it move up to 1198 level out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Ethereum. Dan inside the Tigers Den wanted to take a look at ticker symbol SVRA. And I think we take a look at SVRAs. I've got this up on the screen here. I think what we're going to do is just switch over and take a look at the black background screens out here. The black background screens basically are showing us what it is that I would communicate to you, only it's a little bit clearer. And what I'm going to communicate to you is we've got price above the top of its daily profile right now. The daily profile, the top is 149. We're one penny above it, 150. Price is trading into a swing point from just a couple of weeks ago. That was on June 8th, 462,000 shares. Dan, it's taking that level on with much lighter volume. We're only 166 right now. But trading above or closing above the top of the daily profile would be a bullish signal. Price is trading above the top of the weekly profile, which is 147 here at 149. So really what you've got inside of SVRA, Savara Inc., is you've got price testing resistance levels. I do not know if these resistance levels will hold. If they don't hold, the next resistance level that you have is on the monthly time frame, and that's a descending trend line. And I would say if price can close over the daily and weekly profiles and the monthly can close over the descending trend line, then you've got action to the upside. That action to the upside should target the most recent swing point. That's at about 160. Above 160, you'd be looking at about 191. And above 191, well, now, now I can see what you're gunning for. You'd be gunning for the 358 level. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. Thank everyone for the request. John, for the call. Stay tuned. You've got two more great hours lined up. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien is up after that. And I'll see you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Have a wonderful Wednesday, folks.